This presentation covers the life of American author Joel Chandler Harris, who lived from 1845 to 1908. His birth date, 1845, is three years before what was earlier believed to be his birth date, and many sources still state that his, he was born in 1858. Joel Chandler Harris was born in Eatonton, Georgia on December 9, 1845, not 1848 as traditionally believed. His mother, Mary Ann Harris, never married Joel Chandler Harris's father, and he, he deserted them shortly after Chandler's birth. A family friend gave Joel Chandler Harris and his mother a small cottage to live in behind his, his own mansion and paid for the bright young Harris to attend private school. Harris was a small, red-haired, freckled-faced boy with a great sense of humor and a love for practical jokes, perhaps in an attempt to make up for his slight stammer. At age 16, Joel Chandler Harris was a typesetter for newspaper editor Joseph Addison Turner, the owner of 1,000 Acre Turnwald Plantation, where Joel Chandler Harris lived as well. At the plantation, Harris began publishing poems and book reviews and had access to the slave quarters into the kitchen, where he listened to slaves such as Uncle George Terrell, Old Harbert, and Aunt Chrissy tell African-American animals tales, which heavily influenced his Uncle Remus and other tales, and these slaves also became models for Uncle Remus, Aunt Tempe, and other figures in African-American tales that Harris began writing about ten years later. In 1864, Union troops under General William T. Sherman ransacked Turnwall plant Plantation, stealing valuables, including horses and livestock, on their march to the sea, and Turnwald had to end his publication. Thus, Harris lost his job. Joel Chandler Harris then moved home to Edenton, Georgia, and took a job as a typesetter, which quickly led to numerous editing positions, culminating in his position as editor of the prestigious Atlanta Constitution. Throughout his journalistic career, he also published many literary works, and when he retired as an editor, he left an influential legacy as a progressive conservative who actively promoted socioeconomic, sectional, and racial reconciliation. He was an extremely prolific author, publishing 185 Uncle Remus tales, seven volumes of short stories, four novels, and several children's tales. Chandler's work is known for its use of local color and its accurate portrayal of southern dialect and his portrayal of the lifestyles and values of the rural pre- and post-Civil War South. His work also explored the lighter and darker sides of conflicts in race, class, and gender in the South. The Uncle Remus volumes assured Harris's reputation, which became international almost overnight. Professional folklorists praised his work in popularizing black storytelling traditions. In 1888, Harris, along with Mark Twain, was named a charter member of the American Folklore Society. Before long, in fact, publishing local dialect tales became an international phenomenon. Harris helped spawn a whole new industry. Mark Twain had been so impressed by Harris's dialect writing that he invited Harris in 1882 to meet him and George Washington Cable in New Orleans, Louisiana, to plan an ambitious series of platform readings around the country. However, because of his persistent st stammer, Harris turned down the lucrative offer. Harris also left his impact on major literary figures to come, including Rudyard K uh, Kipling, Zora Neale Hurston, William Faulkner, Flannery O'Connor, Ralph Ellison, and Toni Morrison. Fellow Eatonton writer Alice Walker, however, protested that Harris had stolen her African-American folklore heritage and made and had made it a white man's publishing commodity. The information from this presentation can be found online in the New Georgia Encyclopedia under the entry Joel Chandler Harris, 1845 to 1908, and all images came from Google Images.